the site known as the Cima de los Huesos, translating to Pit of Bones in English and often abbreviated as SH, is an archaeological site from the Lower Paleolithic period. It represents one of the several significant sections within the expansive Cueva Maya Cueva del Silo cave system situated in the Sierra de Atapuerca region in the central northern part of Spain. This site is particularly noteworthy for containing a substantial collection of hominid fossils, with the total count reaching at least 28 individual specimens. These fossils have been conclusively dated to be around 430,000 years old, making the SH site the most extensive and oldest known repository of human ancestral remains discovered to date. The secrets hidden within the depths of these caves, dating back hundreds of thousands of years, could potentially challenge established narratives of human evolution and our place in the world. Could it be that some revelations unearthed at Cima de los Huesos hold the key to a deeper understanding of our origins or perhaps even raise questions about the nature of our existence? The initial discovery of human fossils at the Cima de los Huesos, SH site, dates back to 1976 when they were first unearthed by T. Torres. Intriguingly, there is evidence to suggest that early humans may have adopted a survival strategy similar to hibernation during harsh winters, a phenomenon observed in various animals. Just as bears, bats, and even European hedgehogs hibernate, it now appears that our hominid ancestors might have done the same. Fossil experts have drawn these insights from the examination of bones discovered at one of the world's most significant fossil sites. The evidence gathered from the fossilized bones of early humans reveals lesions and indications of damage akin to those found in the bones of hibernating animals. This leads scientists to propose that our predecessors, facing extreme cold hundreds of thousands of years ago, may have coped with the brutal winters by slowing down their metabolisms and entering months-long periods of slumber. Over the course of the last 30 years, the fossilized remnants of numerous human individuals have been painstakingly recovered from the sediments at the base of a steep and dizzying 50-foot shaft that constitutes the central portion of the pit at Atapuerca. In essence, this cave has transformed into what researchers describe as a massive burial ground. Thousands of teeth and bone fragments have been unearthed, leading experts to believe that these remains were intentionally deposited at this location. These fossilized relics offer a glimpse into the distant past, dating back over 400,000 years. It is highly likely that they belong to early Neanderthals or their predecessors, shedding light on the lives and histories of these ancient human populations. The site's significance lies not only in its rich archaeological and paleontological treasures, but also in the intriguing mystery surrounding the deliberate placement of these human remains within the depths of the cave. The site of Cima de los Huesos stands as one of the planet's most significant repositories of paleontological treasures, offering invaluable insights into the trajectory of human evolution in Europe. However, the narrative surrounding this remarkable site has taken an unexpected turn. In a recent paper published in the journal L'Anthropologie, Juan Luis Arzuaga, who led the initial excavation team at the site, and Antonis Batsiokas from Democritus University of Thrace in Greece, present a novel perspective. They propose that the fossils discovered at Cima de los Huesos exhibit seasonal variations indicative of disruptions in bone growth that persisted for several months each year. This intriguing observation challenges our understanding of the conditions and adaptations of our ancient human ancestors who once inhabited this cave. Asuaga and Bartziokas propose a compelling hypothesis that these early humans might have entered metabolic states akin to hibernation. Such states would have enabled them to endure extended periods of cold and challenging conditions with limited access to food, relying on their body fat stores for survival. Interestingly, this hibernation-like behavior is believed to manifest as disruptions in bone development, leaving traces in the fossil record. While the idea of ancient humans hibernating may initially evoke thoughts of science fiction, the researchers draw attention to the fact that many mammalian species, including primates such as bush babies and lemurs, exhibit similar behaviors. This intriguing parallel suggests that the genetic underpinnings and physiological mechanisms for such a hypermetabolic state might be more widespread among mammals, possibly even including humans. 
It's a concept that challenges our understanding of early human adaptations and opens the door to intriguing possibilities about how our ancient ancestors coped with challenging environmental conditions. The lesions observed in the human bones from the Sima cave exhibit a striking resemblance to the lesions found in the bones of hibernating mammals, including cave bears. This observation leads to a compelling argument put forth by the authors that a strategy of hibernation might have been the only viable solution for early humans to endure the harsh conditions within the cave where they had to spend months in the cold. Furthermore, the discovery of the remains of a hibernating cave bear, Ursus Denningeri, within the Sima pit adds substantial credibility to the notion that early humans adopted a similar hibernation-like strategy. It is suggested that both humans and cave bears resorted to this survival mechanism to brave the frigid conditions and cope with limited food resources. This intriguing proposition challenges our understanding of how these ancient humans adapted to their environment and sheds new light on the innovative strategies they may have employed for survival. The authors meticulously address several counter-arguments in their exploration of this hibernation hypothesis. One notable point of contention is the comparison with modern Inuit and Sami populations who inhabit equally harsh and cold environments but do not exhibit hibernation-like behavior. Asuaga and Batsiokas offer an intriguing explanation for this contrast. They suggest that the key lies in the availability of food sources. In the case of the Inuit and Sami people, their diets include fatty fish and reindeer fat, which serve as essential sources of sustenance during the winter months. These rich food sources eliminate the need for hibernation in these populations. In contrast, the environment around the Sima site half a million years ago would not have provided an adequate supply of such fat-rich food. This scarcity of nourishment would have made it challenging for the inhabitants to sustain themselves during the harsh winter, leading them to resort to the strategy of cave hibernation as a means of survival. It is a compelling argument that underscores the importance of environmental factors in shaping the behaviors and adaptations of ancient human populations. The proposal put forth by Juan Luis Arzuaga and Antonis Batsiokas regarding the hibernation-like behavior of early humans at Cima de los Huesos has generated significant interest and is expected to fuel debate within the scientific community. However, it has also faced scrutiny from experts who offer alternative perspectives. Forensic anthropologist Patrick Randolph Quinney from Northumbria University emphasized the need for a comprehensive examination of other explanations for the variations observed in the SEMA bones. He suggests that a full exploration of these alternative hypotheses is necessary before reaching any definitive conclusions which he believes has not yet been accomplished. Chris Stringer, a researcher at the Natural History Museum in London, pointed out a crucial distinction related to large mammals like bears. While they don't truly hibernate due to their inability to lower their core temperature significantly, they enter a state known as torpor, which is less deep than hibernation. Stringer highlights that, in such a condition, the substantial energy demands of human-sized brains would have remained high, potentially posing an additional challenge for the early humans at SEMA during torpor. These expert perspectives underline the importance of thorough investigation and consideration of various factors in the ongoing exploration of this captivating theory surrounding early human adaptations at Cima de los Huesos. Indeed, while the concept of early humans at Cima de los Huesos adopting a hibernation-like strategy raises intriguing questions, it also offers a promising avenue for further research. One potential way to explore this hypothesis is by examining the genetic makeup of the Sima people, Neanderthals and Denisovans, for genetic changes associated with the physiology of torpor. This genetic investigation could shed light on whether there are any specific adaptations or variations in the genomes of these ancient populations that align with the proposed torpor-like behavior. Such an approach would provide valuable insights into the plausibility of this theory and potentially uncover genetic markers associated with the ability to enter a metabolic state similar to hibernation. It's a fascinating prospect that may further our understanding of how early humans adapted to their environment and survived in challenging conditions.
We will keep you updated on any further developments on this subject. In the meanwhile, please like and subscribe for more such videos. Thanks for watching.